All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, my name is Michael Rambridge. I'm an applications engineer here at Unitronics. And if you have any questions, you can put them in the questions box um, and we will get to those questions at the end of the presentation. Hello everyone and welcome to today's remote access webinar. Today we'll be covering how to remotely access and program both the Unistream and Vision Series controllers. All of the Vision Series programming techniques will also apply to this Samba series of PLCs. Remote access is incredibly important in today's world having to access various sites both locally and afar when you may not be able to go to the factory or go down to the floor. It also allows you to just conveniently access all of your locations from your desk and the computer you have sitting in front of you. So with Unitronics, we offer various ways to both control and monitor your application, troubleshooting, setup, software, data change. It's quick and easy. It's built into Unilogic and offered with very easy to use applications for Visilogic. And this remote access comes with no additional cost to you. So to start, we'll be starting with the Unistream series. So these can be accessed via VNC web server and the Unistream PLC has a virtual HMI as it has no screen that's accessed via VNC or can host a web server. There's remote data access options, FTP, server client, SQL. Unilogic can connect remotely over an ethernet and perform any sort of programming task you might want it to do. There are various options to send notifications and there are there's the ability to add passwords to most, if not all, parts of a Unilogic program. To start, we'll be looking at VNC. So this will show you the HMI as you would see it if you were standing in front of the PLC operating it on the floor. It also allows you to access all of the features of that PLC. PLCs can also host web servers. In Unilogic, these are programmed just like an HMI, and to access them, you would put in the IP address of the unit you're trying to connect to, and that would allow you to view that web server. Again, very quick, you don't need to know anything about HTML or JavaScripting or any of those web page programming techniques. You just need to be able to open up Unilogic and build an HMI. While it does feature a more limited set of functionality than the HMI editor, the web page still offers the ability to view any sort of data and change most functionality of the PLC from it. It also gives you the additional option of being able to have hyperlinks to be able to go to certain uh, web pages that you may want to. It also allows for multiple users to connect to the PLC at the same time from wherever they may be. As long as it's set up in your network, they'd be even be able to access the PLC from outside of your local area. Again, web page is super easy. Anyone can do it. And it's exactly the same as making an HMI on your PLC. And now we're going to take a look at an example project for Unilogic. So here I have a little basic program set up. For this, we're just going to start by taking a look at the remote connection. To set up your remote connection, you're going to go to PLC Communications, then Physical. And the IP address that matters for your remote connection is going to be the panel Ethernet. So I have that set here. 
you also want to configure DNS servers. The two DNS servers you see here are Google's free DNS servers. This will allow the PLC to connect outside of your local network and connect to the internet in general. So just to test to make sure that you have connection, once you have downloaded this project to your PLC, you can go to PC, PLC Communications. You can select Ethernet, and you're going to put in the IP address of that unit. If you have a connection, a green arrow, a green check here, you'll have connection. However, if we move and we change this to something else and we press the refresh, it's going to wait a few seconds while it tries to connect. And either this is going to take a long time and never finish, or in that same area where that green check mark is, you're going to see a red circle with an X in it. The, the connection that you see here is also the connection that will be used when you go to download to the PLC. All right, and again, you'll see that green check when you have connection to your PLC. The most basic form of remote connection that you'll be able to use is this online mode here, where you'll use those communication settings that we set up in the PC, PLC communication. And you can press this online mode here. And then it will connect to your unit and it'll validate the password. Uh, a PLC password is something that you can set up to the PLC when you download the project to the PLC. It will give you the option to keep the default password or you can change it to a password that you would like it to be. And this password will be required for all communication to the PLC. Once you have communication, you'll see that my screen here has gone grayed out. Now what we can do is we can go to the screen. And you'll see that it is also grayed out. This would indicate that we are currently in online mode. You can't make any edits to the HMI while you are in online mode, nor can you make any changes to the ladder. But if we go to the ladder logic, You'll see that certain rungs here are red and there are now blue numbers located over many of the tags. This is showing you the current values of those tags within the PLC. Like up here, you can see as each second passes, the real time clock time in seconds changes live with the values currently in the PLC. In Unilogic, you can also add passwords to the ladder and to the HMIs by hovering over whatever function or HMI you wish to password protect, right clicking it. And you can select password protect. It'll bring up the screen where you, it'll ask you to type in a password and then re-enter that password to verify that it is correct. And then you can press enter there. And now you'll see that there is a little lock next to the ladder icon on function one, which would indicate that that function is now password protected. The same thing will happen when you password protect the HMIs. Now we'll move on to a VNC connection. Once that VNC viewer is open, for this instance, we'll be using type VNC, you'll put in the IP address of the PLC you are attempting to reach as long as you are on its local network. So for this PLC in the office that has the assigned IP address 10.2.2.62 that you can see matches the panel Ethernet settings in our Unilogic project, we can press connect and then it will bring up the VNC screen for that PLC. And what you can see here is it has a mouse on it now to navigate. And you can go ahead and 
edit the values like you were in front of the PLC. Operate buttons. And edit data table entries if you so desire. And if we go back to the PLC and go into online mode, you can see that those values now correspond to the values you see being demonstrated in our VNC viewer. So we turn on the log temperature and the temp log bit then goes high in our program. And if you change the temperature here, you will also see the temperature change here where it is recorded. Now for another option of remote connection, you can go open your desired web browser and in the search bar, type in the IP address of that controller you want to connect to. You can see here the values correspond to what we put in prior. You can see the data table changing its values as it moves and you can edit the values that you see in the PLC. Provided they have been edit enabled like the temperature here in the web page is view only and the editing capabilities of this uh, of this data table have been turned off just so you can have different sorts of functionality on your different locations like if you want someone to be able to remote connect to the PLC and edit its values you can use VNC but if you want an, another option to have someone to be able to connect and edit but another user only be able to view that viewing can be set up with the web page while you have the VNC have all the edit enabled as if you were standing in front of the PLC. Now the additional feature of the web page is it also allows you to add hyperlinks. And these can take you to any web page that you want to link to them. They can also create a new page as you saw here instead of just changing what page you're currently on. And now if we move to Vision and Samba, you'll be able to remotely access them using a remote operator app. You can use a PC or you can use a phone and it can view or control several different PLCs at the same time. So it's just like the VNC where you would be standing in front of the PLC with the same sort of functionality. The remote operator mobile app is the same functionality you see on the PC version. It's just for your mobile device. The data transfer in Vision and Samba, you have the options of the SD card suite remote operator. And there's also something else we'll be looking at today called the data export tool. These will allow you to collect data, on a schedule, on command, or however you want to set it up so that you can collect the data remotely without human interaction or with human interaction from the PLCs. Here are some other remote options. 
And now we're going to take a look at that VisiLogic program. For the VisiLogic program, the first thing you're going to have to do is set up the Ethernet connectivity. This must be done using the following blocks as you see in order in our program here. First, you want it to happen on the power up bit. You can trigger it from any bit, but these should never be running continuously. First, you set up your TCP IP card init block where you assign the IP address, the subnet mask, and then the default gateway. These will be based on your local network settings, and these are the ones that I've selected for this PLC. Then you're going to initialize a socket. So here I've initialized socket zero. For remote connection, it must be TCP, and it must be set to server. The local port isn't so important, but the default here is 20256. You just don't want to use anything that's already used by another functionality of the PLC. Then you need to assign a PLC name. Without a PLC name, you will not be able to connect to the PLC. So I've named this one V700 Webinar because we're using a Vision 700 series. You can also assign this indirectly by linking it to a vector of MIs in an ASCII format. To check connection here, we go to connection, and we go to communication in OS. You're going to select your connection type to TCP IP call. And then you're going to use either project settings or favorites. And you're going to select the button here. And it will bring up this pop-up where you'll put in your IP address as we've selected here. You select your protocol from the drop-down. We're going to use, we're using TCP, and the port number would be the same one that you initialized. And then the name should match the name that you've given to the PLC. And what you can do is you can press the Get OPLC Information button. And that should populate with the PLC that you're using if you have connection. If this does not populate, then go back and double check your settings for the connection. And if those are correct, check your PC and network settings to make sure what you've set up in the project matches what you have set up in your PLC. Just like the Unistream, you can go ahead, you can press the online test mode and it will use whatever connection you've set up in that prior connection menu. So when you're in online test mode, the HMI will not become grayed out, but you will see the red lines appear with the logic in your ladder. You will also see an online test block pop up, which allows you to stop the PLC, run the PLC, while in stop, stop mode, you can also execute a single cycle of the PLC at once. You can go to the current HMI display. That brings you to the active HMI. And you can press remote access, which will bring up the remote access app. The remote access app will show you the HMI you're currently on, and it will allow you to operate the buttons or change the numbers as if you were sitting in front of the screen yourself and it will execute the logic of the PLC as it's been configured in your project based on the values you're updating here on the remote operator app.
the remote operator app sometimes does have a slight delay to it. That's normal. It depends on the size of the project and how big of an impact on the ladder the changes you're making have. Now we'll take a look at something called the Data Export Tool. Just like any other software that we offer, you're going to want to make sure to run this as administrator. If you don't run it as administrator, you're likely going to get some sort of runtime error or other sort of error. So here, since I've already created a project, I'm going to open a project. And what you have here is we have a PLC that's been added. You'll see the PLC name matches the name we set up in the ladder. The IP address matches. I don't have any unit ID set up for this unit. The PLC type will show here and the PC port you're connecting to. It gives you the option to enable or disable this PLC so that when you run the project, you only connect to the PLCs that you want to connect to and pull data from. To add a PLC, you would go to this icon here and select add site. This will bring up the following pop-up where you would put in the PLC name for this example. We're just going to call it V570 test. And you're going to make sure you have it selected from the appropriate series of controllers here. This is the vision enhanced series. This is the standard vision series, your M90 and Jazz, and your Samba series controllers. By default, you can have it enabled. You can also choose to synchronize your real-time clock and you can have it set a memory bit in the controller so that you know it has connected and pulled the data from it. You have schedules. You can have multiple schedules so each PLC can be pulling from a different schedule and the different data table or region you want to connect to. You have your direct connection and you can either use and you use the Ethernet call here and you would put in the IP address, whatever the IP address of the unit you're connecting to would be. The protocol you're using, we recommend TCP so you don't have any lost or dropped data and the port number you're connecting to. We use the default here of 20256. You'll also have the option to create a file using a template or just a CSV file. What you can do is you can press apply and then OK. And now you'll see this new PLC or new site pop up here. So we're not going to enable this because this PLC doesn't actually exist. And then what you would do is you would press run project. you'll see the following calls log pop up on your screen. And if you have a name that doesn't match, you'll see this data tables mismatch. A call succeeded if it worked. And if you're having some problems with your ethernet, you'll see this ethernet connection failed. So that just means that we currently can't access that. And that is because we are using online mode in Physiologic here that is also operating on port 20256. So if we go and disable that and then return to our data export app, we can select the force call here, select the PLC we want to force a data call to, 
And now you can see the call succeeded because that port is now available. So if you want to be able to run all of these things simultaneously, you would want to set up several different sockets so that you can use a different connection port for each method of data collection or PLC communication that you want to use. So if we wanted to do that in VisLogic, it would be as easy as going to com and doing another TCP IP socket in it. And this time we're going to use socket one on TCP with a local port of 20257. So it's different from the first one. And it is also going to be server. And because we have connection, we can also remotely download to our PLC. When you're doing this, you would want to make sure that you haven't edited your, your IP address in any way, because otherwise you may not be able to connect to it if that IP address is already taken. Another little tidbit is that downloads are typically a little bit faster over Ethernet than they would be with a standard USB connection. Now that we have this set up with these two sockets, we can go online here and we'll leave that in online mode while we go to our data export tool. Now what we'll do here is we'll edit this site. So now that we're using port 20257, press apply and press OK. And now if we go to run the project while we have remote connection, you can see now that when we force a call, the call succeeds because we're using a different port than online mode, so it's able to communicate to both of those at once. This sort of port selection is done automatically in Unilogic. That's why you don't have to do that there. The same goes for remote operator or remote access. You would have to use a different port than online mode if you were also currently with on online mode. And with data export, all of these applications, when they're connected at the same time, need their own port to communicate over. Again, to summarize, these allow you to connect from anywhere, as long as you have a VPN connection to access the local network, which is easy to configure. There are many, many options to set that up. It supports a PC, tablet, mobile phone, anything that can connect to the internet really can connect to these methods of communication, provided that you can either access a web browser or load the remote operator app onto the device. Configuration for them is simple and quick, and you can have multiple simultaneous connections, and it also allows you to restrict user access. And again, thank you for watching today. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat box now. All right, so we're just gonna go over some of the questions. Um, so we have something here about a Google server. So the DNS server is what will allow you to access the outside web 
and that would be set up. Um, usually you would go through your IT department or something like that to see what they want to use, or you can look up a, a free one. Um, Googles are free. You can find those online. Um, so is there a way to access the PLC code to test it or download a new program? Um, you can access it remotely through either programming environment, either Unilogic or Visilogic, and you can download to those PLCs remotely. You just want to make sure that you don't change your IP settings because you will lose connection. Um, and it's just better to keep them the same. If you change them, there's a chance that IP address might be taken and now you're no longer able to access that PLC. Is it possible to update the firmware by TCP IP? So you can do that over Unilogic. However, with Visilogic, I do believe you have to use the serial connection. Um, so accessing stuff from outside the local network would be done through a VPN connection that would be set up usually in conjunction with your IT department. Some locations don't like to allow outside outside networks access to their local network. In, in that case, you'd have to set up something with, with your local network just to make that possible, some port forwarding stuff. Just, just some more network intensive. Are there options to update the program through a web server on Unilogic or another remote method? So you would have to use Visilogic or Unilogic, like I said earlier, and then you would be able to connect to those PLCs. Um, we will be sending out the, the presentation slides as well as a recording of this webinar for anyone who is interested. Um, we should be able to send that out just based off of the emails you submitted when you signed up here. So unfortunately, we do not have any sort of Wi-Fi of Wi-Fi availability currently. They would have to be direct connected to a router that might have Wi-Fi connection. Um, so outside of Unilogic software, um, there aren't really any options I'm aware of for Unilogic, but what you can do is you can lock the, the ladder or the HMIs so they can't view them. Um, that would make it so they can't be edited or changed by any sort of end user. And do you offer any 4G routers? All of the routers we currently offer are 4G. And if you have any more specific problems to your specific application, um, just send an email with that question to support at unitronics.com and we will get back to you as quickly as we can. All right, if we don't have any other questions, that will conclude today's webinar. Thank you all for coming.